Welcome back. So today's the day. We're going to start writing this essay that we have been talking about and practicing skills for. Today we're going to look at the introduction and we're going to write the introduction to our papers today. And a good introduction has five things. It answers four questions and has one solid statement. Okay, and those four questions are what's being debated objectively. Remember, we went over objective summaries. Objectively, what are both arguments? What is your answer? Now, this is going to be the tricky part because you can't use I think or I believe any of that. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So what is your answer? What evidence do you have that proves your answer? And then a thesis statement. We're going to spend a chunk of time on thesis statements because a well-written thesis statement can help you um, write the rest of your paper, arguably, okay? And so these are the four questions that you should be able to answer within your paper. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to do, I'm going to do an example for you. All right, we're going to look at who has better French fries, Chick-fil-A or Bojangles? Now, this may be a silly question, but you're going to see that by following that format that we just discussed, you can make this turn into a uh, articulate debate. And so the first goal of your introductory paragraph, like we said over here, is what is being debated? So an opening statement or sentence that says what is being debated. All right. So. There is a large debate between Chick-fil-A and Bojangles. So we're taking that question and trying to turn it into a sentence and also answer what's being debated. So there's a large debate between Chick-fil-A and Bojangles over whose fries are better. All right, so... We introduce what is being uh, debated in the really just by rephrasing our question into a statement. And so now the second question was objectively, what are both arguments? So you're going to present in a real simple statement what both arguments are, are again in an objective way. So without showing your opinion, without showing which side you're on, just simply state what each side argument is. And so Chick-fil-A believes that the uniqueness of their waffle fries gives them the edge. All right, so we presented side A. Chick-fil-A believes that the uniqueness of their waffle fries gives them the edge. But now you have to objectively give the other side. Bojangles and you don't want to be sound repetitive. So if you said Chick-fil-A believes you need to use a synonym for believe, something that means the same thing, because you don't want to say believes twice. It gets very repetitive and redundant. So Bojangles uh, says their seasoned fries have the upper hand.
So you've presented both sides of the argument. The Chick-fil-A waffle fry, the Bojangles season fry. You, this is what the debate was. Which fry is better? And you, in two sentences, have presented what each side believes. Chick-fil-A believes their waffle fries are better. Bojangles believes their seasoned fries are better. And so now you have to de or state what you believe. But with now, this is why you don't have to say, I think or I believe. It's your faith. I know as a teacher that you believe whichever side you pick because you're writing it. So anyone that's reading it is going to know what you think or what you believe. So you don't have to say that. You don't have to use I. You just tell me which one is better. All right? And so for the sake of this video, we're going to say that Chick-fil-A. Okay? While both taste great, okay, while both taste great, Chick fil A is the clear winner. Now, obviously, when you're writing, you don't have to do this in different colors, but I just thought if I changed the colors, it would be easier for you to see how I'm switching from one to the next. So, we said, what is your answer? Now you have to sit or uh, explain really briefly, it doesn't have to be elaborate, what evidence you have that proved that that answer is right. Okay? So, real quick. The evidence can be found. The evidence can be found in a fast food study done by the News and Observer. which is a newspaper in Raleigh, a uh, fast food study done by the News and Observer and other sources. Okay? So, you've introduced the debate. You've objectively stated both sides. You've told which side you're on. Again, I didn't have to say, I believe or I think. I just said Chick-fil-A is the clear winner. So both taste great. Chick-fil-A is the clear, clear winner. And I know this because the evidence can be found in a fast food study done by the News and Observer and other sources. Okay? And so this is what brings us to arguably the most important part of your introduction. And that is your thesis statement. All right? So we're going to come back. And your thesis statement is always the last sentence of your introduction. All right, your thesis statement should always be the last sentence of your introduction. And what you want is for your thesis statement to be a foundation for the rest of your essay. So I recommend, and you can use this across curriculums. I use this, this uh, thesis sentence, thesis statement skeleton or outline for all classes, all the way through college I did, okay? And I learned it in 10th grade. 10th grade I learned it in my AP English class. Thank you, Ms. Nichols. So, through, and you're going to give three reasons. All right, so through reason one, reason two, and reason three, you don't have to use through, you can, by explaining one, two, and three, whichever, just an introduction, and then three reasons, okay, so through blank, blank, and blank, uh, and then your answer, then you put your answer.
Okay? So through blank, blank, and blank, then that follows by or is followed with your answer. And so I'm going to close out uh, my who has better french fries, Chick-fil-A, or Bojangles with my thesis statement. And then I'm going to explain how that helps write the remainder <coughs> of your paper. Okay? So, through... And your three arguments why you're right, you want to put them in the order uh, of least or, or your least best argument to your very best argument. Okay, so whichever argument is the least strongest, you want to list that first. The second best or, or the second best argument, put it second, and then your best argument third. So through the length of lines. Okay, so that's my that's not my best argument. That's of my three arguments, that's my my least best argument. All right, so through the length of lines, the number of restaurants and the news and observer study. Okay, so through the length of lines, the number of restaurants, and the news and observers study, so there are my three reasons, the three uh, things I'm going to explain how they prove that I'm right, I'm going to give my answer. So through the length of lines, the number of restaurants, and the news and observers study, it is clear, so this is where I just answer the question. Space. All right. So, through the length of lines, the number of restaurants, and the news observer study, it is clear that Chick Fil A has better French fries. Okay. So, this is important when we. Uh, and this is why the thesis statement is arguably the most important portion of your introductory paragraph. Because with a good thesis statement, it can, like I said, set the what's the word foundation for the uh, remainder of your paper. So now this thesis statement, what this thesis statement does is helps you think through the rest of your paper. So your next, your second paragraph, your first body paragraph, which we're going to talk about in the next video, is going to be about the length of lines at each restaurant. Okay. And so you're going to do a paragraph about the length of lines at each restaurant. This is why you have to put them in the correct order. Your second paragraph, your second body paragraph, is going to be about the number of restaurants that each one has. And then your third body paragraph, which is going to be the last argument you make, which is why you want to, the last thing the reader read should be your best argument. And so the third one is the News and Observer Study. Boom, now you know what your three body paragraphs are going to be. Um, so your task is to write the introduction to your paper. Should students come back to school in person or should we remain virtual? All right, you can always reach out to me for assistance. Um, and as always, you have a great day.